Good morning, Rick. Hey, good morning, Megan. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for uh, joining me for our cool. third session of uh, what the heck's going on out there. And, I know, right? For yeah. sure. And you and I talk before the meeting and we talk about like what's the buzz on the street, mm -hmm. what's the word, right. what do people want to mm -hmm. know about, what are people calling mm -hmm. me for, what they're calling you for. And I told you yesterday <clears throat> um, that I had gotten a text message from a realtor friend of mine over the weekend and it sounded uh, pretty pretty panicky, you know, she's mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, did you hear that there are, you know, no more jumbo loans and, and it's just something to that effect. And my first mm -hmm. reaction was like, <gasps> you know, yeah, and right, my, right. Yeah, my second reaction was, Megan, you have made a commitment to your sanity to only mm -hmm. trust a few people in different subjects of your life. You know, like if I want to, get advice on tr child rearing i'll talk to one right. person you know my uh -huh. horse that's a popular discussion at the barn whenever something's wrong with your horse everybody's got an opinion and they're yeah oh, for sure so yeah. when i want to know what is really going on and what the real story is from the mortgage market then i ask you so i mean what's the buzz with this um jumbo loan thing and then we'll get into mm -hmm. um the forbearance and people not making their mortgage payments and what that all means okay okay cool thanks so first of all jumbo loans are is a very very small piece of the market so in orange county our max loan amount is over seven hundred sixty four thousand before mm -hmm. you go into the jumbo space so jumbo is a very very small piece of that market and, and this is all temporary as i've said before the sky's not falling we're going to be okay. Stay calm. We're going to be okay on the other side of this. So I'm not really too worried about it. We are seeing some tightening of guidelines across the board, though. Mm -hmm. and it has to really have a lot to do with the secondary mortgage markets. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, about there not being enough liquidity in the markets to buy the mortgage-backed securities. So when there's not enough market for certain products, certainly they're going to tighten up the guidelines a little bit and not want to do as many of those loans. Mm -hmm. You can still do jumbo loans. By the way, a great alternative to a jumbo loan is do what's called a piggyback. So you take a, a first mortgage to a $764,000 loan and then do a small second mortgage behind that. So that way you keep your conforming limit with a better rate, better loan terms, then do a small second mortgage behind it. You avoid, you avoid the PMI and you avoid the more restrictive guidelines on the jumbo products. Nice. So the fact that there's not as many jumbos in the market is not the end of the world. Number one. Number two, it's a very small piece of the world anyway. So it's in my mind, not really a big deal. Got it. Got it. Thank Short you story. for, thank you for clarifying that because I feel like, um, like what, what you and mm -hmm. I have been repeatedly saying is that, you know, right. this is, this is temporary mm -hmm. and it's going to pass and how we get through this is going to determine, um, you know, we, we've got to keep our heads level and we have right. to realize that there's going to be some holes, you know, it's like we're in a big giant ship and right. there's going to be some holes, but mm -hmm. there's way to fill those holes. Right. And um, we're going to get through it. So that's really good advice. Sure. And I have always actually preferred piggyback loans when I can, because yep. um, I don't, you know, PMI is pretty expensive. Yes, it is. It mm -hmm. can be very expensive. So, I mean, as you said, this is short term. We've talked about this. I see that that Facebook was some on all the time and loan officers talking about the market and things happening and they're all thinking the sky's falling and it's simply not. Uh, it's really a matter of how you, how you manage that process mm -hmm. and understanding how the markets work. Yeah. And so we understand the basics of this market. It's going to be just fine. People are still buying houses. People are still funding loans. We're closing loans you know, every month. We had our biggest funding month ever in the company last month. So, right, uh, right. so people think we're not funding yet. People are funding loans. The difference is you have to know how to structure it. Mm. That's it. So if, once you understand the market and how things work, it's easy to make things work, right? Right. So right. that's kind of how I do it. I know. I'm pretty busy, too. I put um, a couple of houses up for sale over the weekend. Um, they were mm -hmm. uh, all around um, like the uh, uh, 600 to, to 850 yep. range, yep. which is pretty much what our affordability is around here. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. all of them have um, showing requests. And so, um, 
you know, what that tells me is that, and I'm, I'm seeing this in other data too, is that mm -hmm. um, houses are still selling. You're not going to have 30 people through your house. You're going to have right. a lot of online activity and, mm -hmm. you know, we've kicked that up to mm -hmm. level you know, 10 with all of the videos mm -hmm. and 3D yeah. floor plans and everything. I've seen those great videos. I've seen them great videos. They're pretty good, huh? Yeah, they're awesome. I love them. So, yeah. so like we want people when, by the time they show up to the house, mm -hmm. we want somebody like they're ready to make a decision. Like they are right. already like 90% in, you know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I see things moving along uh, well still and um, I'm confident that uh, we, we, as long as we keep a level head and we be problem solvers and leaders mm -hmm. for our clients, right. that we're going to be fine. But, but no you doubt. know, this is really, um, you know, a lot of fear mm -hmm. is driving people's decisions mm -hmm. right now, and and so we just have to not jump on that that train, you know. Right. Well, you know, the good news is, as you, see, as you see in your listings already, there's buyers out there. And those are the serious buyers. Right. These are buyers that really want to buy. Right. And these are the buyers that really are the most qualified buyers. Right. You know, in the marketplace. Agreed. And the rates, and by the way, the rates are still really, really good. Right. right. So the buyers that are out there, as you've seen by your activity on your listings, they're really serious buyers and they're very qualified. And guess what? They're ready to close. That's, That's right. That's the good news. Right. That's right. And they'll I close like quickly that. inside of 30 days, generally. They're ready right. to go. Yeah, good. these are not tire kicker types of buyers. They're good qualified people out there. I like that. And it's like, you know, what seller doesn't want, you know, um, extra looky loose through their house? I mean, right. like their ho houses are still selling at the market value. So they are. I mean, yeah. you know, so everybody just calm down. We're going to be fine. Just change yep. the way you do things. Be yeah. safe, follow the guidelines and be, you know, intentional and things will get done. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's Good stuff advice. there, Megan, for sure. Okay, so here's the next hot topic. Uh -huh. um, all of my tenants paid their rent, thank God. Okay. And a friend of mine called yesterday. I was just looking. Mm -hmm. uh, California uh, Association of Realtors put out some really good information on uh, landlords and paying rent. And so I've got a pretty good idea about that. So if anybody wants mm -hmm. information, they can shoot me a message. But what is, what's the deal with forbearance? What are you hearing about people not making their mortgage payments? Right, right. It's a great question. So here's a, what's important to know about forbearance. Really key difference. Forbearance is not forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So people hear these things in the news, they see it in the media, they think, oh great, this is a way I could not make payments for six months. So under the forbearance program, so it's a six month program of not making payments. When you're in forbearance, um, does not report on your credit report as a, as a delinquent payments. Mm -hmm. So no hit to the credit scores, no hit to the credit reporting at all. But please be mindful, forgiveness, I mean, it's not forgiveness, it's forbearance. And so this is a still territory that we're still getting used to, but here's what happens on forbearance. Mm -hmm. After that six month period of not making payments, whatever, you, whatever the balance you didn't make during that six months period is now due and payable. Mm. So if your mortgage payment is $3,000 a month, let's say for example, and you go through that six month program and don't make those payments, at the end of six months, you have an $18,000 bill to pay. Wow, wow. Like so it's who, not forgiveness. Yeah, where, and where are you gonna find that in uh, you know, six months that you haven't been employed? Right. I don't know. It's not gonna happen. So mm -hmm. you gotta be very, very careful. Now look, if someone has problems making their mortgage payments, you really wanna look at some sort of forbearance program I would encourage you to call your loan service or get the details, but I can tell you so far what we know about these programs, it is not forgiveness and it does not, the, the, the payments are not made, do not get added on to the back end of the mortgage. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so after that six month period, whatever the payments were that were not being made are now due and payable, here's the catch. You could be very careful here. The catch is that after that six month period, if you don't make that $18,000 payment, you are now delinquent. Whoa. At that point, you're delinquent on your mortgage. And that Holy will report cow. to the credit bureaus. Okay, so be very, very careful here. I would suggest for every buyer that might have an issue with their payments, do everything you can, as much as you can, to make those payments. Mm -hmm. Because at, at some point, after six months, you've got to, you've got to pay that back. That's and right. I think that at some, at some level, that's going to create some problems. Yeah, I agree. You know, people that are in forbearance after six months aren't going to be able to make an $18,000 payment. It's just not right. going to happen, right? right. 
So be very careful of that. Again, it's not forgiveness, it's forbearance for some period of time. By the way, loan servicers have no interest in foreclosing on homes. That's not what they're there to do. Right. They want to work things out. But, right. they be, but also be mindful that, that loan servicers also have limitations to what they can do because on the back end of all those loans, they're making those payments to their, to their secondary market investor. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so, that, so that loan servicer, while you're not making payments, is guess what? Still making payments to the end user, which is the secondary mortgage market. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they don't have a lot of a lot of sometimes options in terms of what they can do. So it's some, so it can be different based on the loan program, but be very very careful here. All right, I, I hear what you're saying, and you know things are are fluid and things are changing, and maybe something will change there. But as of today, right. as of right now, right today, April eighth. Um, the word mm -hmm. on the street is forbearance is not equal forgiveness. Call your, Correct. call your mortgage company Yes. and do not mess around with this. If you can make your around. payment, right. make your make payment. payment, make your payment. Yes. If you can't make your That's payment, the right guidance. then my gosh, let's get this. We'll work it out. out. Yeah, 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 for sure. Right. But it's not, I get calls all the time. People say, well, I can just stop making payments for six months, right? Ah, really can't do it that way. That's right. not the way it's designed. You yeah. Know. Yeah. So All right. just be mindful of that. Well, that's really great advice. I appreciate your time today and getting us caught up on things and how, how are the rates and how's everything working out there? You don't have to quote me a rate, but are things, are things getting a little steadier or how's it going? Yeah. Yeah, we are actually a little by little. It's getting steadier that the, the, the movement in the mortgage back market is not as, as volatile as it has been. It's getting more into more of a narrow range now, finally. Still can be some ups and downs in the market a little bit, but overall, we're going to be in a very, very good rate environment for the next few months. I don't see that rates are going to spike up. Um, I think as the market settles and we and it gets more of a sense of normalcy, whatever that is these days, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to see rates that are very consistent, very good, and that's great for the home buying market as well. Right. I mean, refinances are always great. Don't get me wrong, but it's especially important for people that want to buy a home that for the next few months, as we go through this process, they're still going to get a terrific rate. That's going right. to be great for them too. Excellent. Well, good. Well, thank you so much, Rick. It's good to see you yeah, as thanks, always. Megan. Yeah, you too. Thanks. And Great to be um, on with if you. anybody has any questions, um, yeah, just reach out to me. Yeah, they can talk to us. All right. Thanks, yeah, Rick. We're here. Thanks, Megan. Take care. Bye. See you later.